morning. It's the 18th of December, so day 18 of my Vlogmas. I had this plan. I'd gotten up, I'd done my video editing, done my yoga, and I thought, ooh, I can get some sewing done before my husband wakes up. If I'm sewing early in the morning, I will usually bring the sewing machine into the kitchen just because it's further from the bedroom because I don't want to wake him up while I'm sewing. And then I remembered, I got these babies on the kitchen table, so I felt like it was probably just going to be too much bath in the end and really not worth it by the time I took these out of the molds and then managed to move everything in. By the time I started sewing, he'd probably be up by that point anyway. But what I thought I would do is just start the day off by pulling these out of the molds, show you what I've got, have a look myself at what I've got, and then what I can do is just sit and pin together the pieces of the Udi that I'm making for him. Now I would say pin, I'm actually gonna be using Wonder Clips because from what I remember with this one anyway, pins, they go in and then they get lost because there's so much thickness to the teddy bear fleece. So I would generally prefer to use clips where I can. Sometimes clips just aren't gonna do it, but for the most part they will. I, I do still need to finish some bowl cozies, but what I wanted to do is just to give myself a bit of a break. I'm having a bit of a bowl cozy overload. I think any project when you're making a lot, it's good just to take a break now and again. So I'm not necessarily committing to finishing his video, but I just wanted to spend a little bit of time working on a different project because obviously the bowl cozies do have a deadline, which is approaching. So I'm hoping to get a bit of sewing time done today, but I feel like if I can just clip together the bits that I can, when I do get time to go to the sewing machine, it'll be a little bit more efficient. So I do often do that. So for this buddy, for example, I can be clipping together the two pieces of the hood, the two pieces of the sleeve, two pieces of the cuff together, uh, the side seam, shoulder seams. And then that way, when I get to go to the sewing machine, oh, the pocket as well, I can fold that over and clip it where it needs to be. Then when I get to go to the sewing machine, I can kind of whiz all those bits through and I'm then a good portion of the way through the whole buddy. But let me first, before I do any of that, see what we've got as far as these Christmas trees. So these have been here overnight. They're completely firm and dry now. Ooh, wobbly, wobbly. So I just have to pull these out of the molds. What I didn't mention, I only did so good of a job. It's best if you can try and keep this bottom edge relatively level, so that way that's gonna help it to sit flat. But there is some flexibility and some give once you take them out of the molds. So I'm just gonna see if this one, yeah, I'm just gonna give it a little twist. Just came out pretty easy. I know they're not all gonna be that easy. I can see that it's slightly crooked. I don't know how easy that's gonna be to see on there. That's just because I do have a little bit that just kind of sticks out. I'm just gonna try and push that back a bit. So like I said, there's a little bit of flexibility. So I'm just pushing that down. And that is just pretty as a picture. Love it. So this has got dark green. I think there was some lighter green. It doesn't look that light now on here and some light gray. So it's, I would say like a kind of moodier, darker kind of tree. This one's definitely different. So I use some light purple, some dark purple, some gray and some white. Just has a very wintry feel to me. So it's not as dark, it's a bit bright, a bit more colorful, but very much a winter vibe to me. This one I think turned out really cool. It was a bit more experimental. So it had the green, but it also had some of the darker purple. I felt like that would just kind of catch the light here and there. It's not really obviously very purple, but there's just a little bit of it there. I think that's really pretty. This one I wanted to make different shapes. So I tried to make a wider cone, so I think this will be a fun shape. How great. So it's another one of the purple, white, and gray. And that one stands pretty well on its own. If you watched my Vlogmas last year, you might remember one of the big things that I was working on throughout December were some knitted mug cozies for the midwives that I was managing. So I knitted some big rectangles, I added a loop to the end, put it around a mug and buttoned it on, and then over the top of it I put their initials and then the logo for the team that they're on. So at the time I was managing the lavender team and the dandelion team. 
And so I embroidered dandelion and lavender on top of the mocha, the mocha cozies. And this is leftover embroidery th thread. So these are all the leftovers from last year. So I had green, purple, and gray. I also had some brown, but that didn't seem like the most appropriate for the trees. But I'm so glad I was able to use up those scraps in such a pretty way. Now onto a little sewing prep. through a couple of things here so I have a long stitch length of four I could even probably go four and a half or possibly even five but I don't want to risk it being too loose of a stitch and it's really difficult to see my stitches in this fabric just wanted to mention because this is one of the things that caught me out many times when I was making my own udi this is the presser foot down up against my fabric here with the need with the presser foot down this is the presser foot up and as you can probably see, it doesn't look that raised. I feel like it's really not that easy to tell. When you lower it, you can see there's a difference, but it's so marginal. It's just so easy to not realize that your presser foot is still up. On thin fabric, you would never make that mistake. The other thing to mention is that I have lowered my pressure foot pressure down quite low, so that way it's not expecting it to be completely flat down because it's never gonna be. And as I'm moving it through, or as it's moving through the machine, I'm just pulling from the back. I'm not trying to get it to go faster than the machine wants to go, but just to help it to shift because if I didn't, it would probably just stitch in the same place. I had a very nice French toast breakfast. I've been wanting to make French toast, haven't had it for ages, and got a good bread for it, so decided it was the morning for French toast, and I very much enjoyed that. Gave me a bit of energy for the rest of the morning. We've just been hanging out, playing some video games, not doing too much, just had some showers, and I've been sneaking away at points. I say it's sneaky, and I call it sneaky sewing. It's not really sneaky. I can sew when I want to sew, but Basically, anytime my husband would go to, you know, leave the room for whatever reason, when he was in the shower, for example, I would sneak in, do a few stitches, see how much I could get done. And it's 11.45 and I've actually gotten quite a bit done. This is definitely the benefit of having clipped everything together beforehand so that I could just power through when I had some time. So I've made a hood. Now, I didn't mention, but I actually did a facing for this hood and I did it for mine as well. And that's partly because I didn't want to do a double-sided hood. I felt like that would just be too hot. I mean, just in general, I didn't want a two layer with this fabric was be really too hot. But I did want to have some way to finish the edge, but also the hood piece is not, it doesn't join together at the front, the standard hood piece. And I like this to join together at the front. I didn't have enough fabric to extend it as long as I would have wanted to, to fold it back. Same for mine, funnily enough. It's just the way the, you know, the piece is how they all fit together. So what I did was the edge of this is basically probably a good couple of inches beyond where the hood piece is supposed to end. And rather than folding that back and having a, a narrower facing here, a narrower fold here, I just made a whole facing piece that I stitched around, flipped it over and stitched it into place. So I've got a hood finished. I've got two sleeves finished which are the weirdest shape. The, the pieces on this thing are really bizarre, but this is the shape of the sleeve and it's the shape on mine. And it, it works well because you can wear quite a lot of heavy clothes underneath it, like big sweatshirts and things, and you still have room for your arms. So the sleeves are done, the hood is done. 
I've stitched down the edges of this kangaroo pocket. So you gotta do the, the, bar, the part that's the opening basically, get stitched down, stitched in place, and then this is gonna get attached to the body. I have sewn together the body at the shoulder seams and at the side seams. And if you remember, I kept the original hem of the blanket, so I'm not gonna have to hem it, which is awesome. So there's really not much left to do. I basically need to attach the pocket to the front. I need to attach the hood and the sleeves. And I've got an hoodie. So I was saying to my husband, I might just carry on sewing until lunchtime because I think there's a good chance I might just finish this and that would be nice for him as much as it would be nice for me. So I'm gonna crack on and see what I can get done. to make my husband a very happy man. <sighs> this is so cozy. So, so nice. He is going to be so happy, genuinely. He has been very patient, waiting, but excited to get this thing made up. So I get to surprise him and then it's lunchtime. Well, I am happy to report that the Udi was a big hit as expected. My husband put it on and then gave me a big lovely cozy hug which was the best thank you I could get. I am going to start some gingerbread cookies now. My plan was to get going with these a little while ago and I was gathering all of my ingredients and would you guess what ingredient I was missing? The ground ginger. A little bit critical. I thought I'd checked everything and I bought my treacle which is molasses in the UK which is one of the key ingredients and somehow thought I had ground ginger, didn't have ground ginger, but we went out and got some. It is rainy now. Apparently it's gonna be rainy till Christmas, which is a bit rubbish, but it is what it is. We'll see if we get any moments that we can pop out because there were some things I was hoping to do outdoors before Christmas comes on Vlogmas, but can't control the weather. I have a bag of Christmas cookie cutters. I've got a variety. Some are big, most are small. My plan was to make small ones, but I've got this really cute snowflake, which I really like, and part of me would like to maybe make some of those. I'll have to make some decisions. Obviously, if I make small ones, I'll get more out of them, but then they also do take ages. One tip I will give you guys that I do when I'm rolling out, this is sugar cookies, ginger cookies, any kind of cookie that you roll out and cut. You generally want to have them at a even width. You're rolling it out to an even width. And in my recipe, it says you want about half a centimeter thick. So what I do is I tape together some chopsticks because I know this section of the chopstick is about a quarter, or sorry, about a half a centimeter wide. So I tape two together so that I can lay them flat. And I've got two sets of these, one I put either side of the area that I'm rolling, and I always roll between two pieces of parchment so I don't have to put any flour down, it doesn't stick to my rolling pin. You'll see as I go, but I just wanted to explain in case you weren't sure what I was doing, but I'm gonna crack on with these cookies.
those gingerbread cookies definitely turned out very good. They're not super sweet, which I think is important because when you put the sweet royal icing on top, it would just be inedible if they were too sweet. I think they're going to be absolutely perfect. They were actually, it didn't make as much dough as I was expecting. So I went for all the small cookies just because I felt like I'd hardly get any out of the big cutters. So I ended up with 25 cookies of the small ones. I did take one though just to test, just to make sure that they were okay. Genuinely, I needed to make sure that they were okay. <laughs> that is a nice bonus as being the one who baked it that you got to try it. I did split it with my husband though. I just wanted to mention the recipe. It came from this book. It's the Biscuiteers Book of Iced Biscuits. I actually was able to find this recipe online, so I'll put it down in the description box down below. It's just a good go-to, I would say, like I said. It's not too sweet. There's a decent amount of spice in there, and I think it works really well with royal icing. I wanted to get on and do my advent calendars because I'm getting into the late afternoon and I haven't done them yet. So let's start with the Fabric Godmother. So few days left, right? Not many doors left to open. 18th is over here. The sewing tip is clean the fluff and lint from your sewing machine and overlocker. Now, considering the project that you know that I've just worked on, you would think I very much do need to clean that out. Interestingly, when I made my Udi, I was expecting there to be fluff and lint everywhere, but it actually didn't really get into either of the machines very much. However, the bowl cozies, because you've got cotton batting going through the sewing machine, that leaves a lot of just stuff in the machine. So I absolutely do need to get on with that as soon as I finish my bowl cozies. Sewing machine needles, always handy. These are organ needles. I've had these before, they're good quality. These are a size 14 slash 90. Good size to have. You can never have too many sewing machine needles. And Kusmi Tea. The 18th is a bit of a longer shape. It's a tea infuser. So I use these all the time. I've got a couple of them. They do get quite bashed around in the drawer and getting washed up. Very handy with all the lovely loose tea I've been getting. So my husband and I are now gonna sit curled up on the sofa in our hoodies with cups of tea and watch the finale of Andor, the Star Wars series on Disney+. Plus. It started off a little slow, but we've been enjoying it a lot as it's gone on, so I think it will be a fun one to see the finale of. I think that'll probably be me as far as interesting creative things to share for the day. I'm gonna be working now Monday through Thursday, so I don't know how much time I'll get to edit, how much time I'll get to film, but I'll show you as much as I can and as much as I think is interesting. I'll check in with you guys again tomorrow. Bye.